once a man is thinking nature is in our control and not the other way around. Let them fight. Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back again. So in today's video, a lot of you guys were commenting and telling me to react to the brand new video that's made by Goji Center, which is called Indonymous Rex vs. The Skullcrawler. This is another in-depth combat analysis. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and check this out. In the Jurassic World franchise, no other dinosaur has inflicted devastating carnage on an entire ecosystem like the Indominus Rex. The MonsterVerse spits back with creatures whose mere existence is to kill, eat, and repeat the skull crawlers. <laughs> so what would happen if a fully grown I'm gonna go with Indominus Rex. Will the skull crawler be yet another fatality, or will the Indominus Rex be Woo! another Woo! I remember that scene, yep. In this battle, we will compare these two creatures totally I'm going with the Indominus Rex. This battle alive. We will compare these creatures That's my vote. Weapons. Behaviors mm. and more to determine which one of these monsters will live to kill another day. This Shit. is villain versus villain, psycho versus psycho. <laughs> so make sure you hang tight till the end as we put these two man eaters to the test to determine who is the ultimate island terror. Before we put these two monsters in the analysis platform, let's take a small moment to understand their builds. Okay. In the 2015 film Jurassic World, the Indominus Rex was not fully grown. This hybrid was designed to be more. Oh, I honestly didn't know that. Shit. Larger than the T Rex. I'm 510. What the fuck? And weight somewhere around eight tons. In addition to these measurements, it's imperative to note that this dinosaur's genetic pool included many other dinosaurs and animals, such as the Velociraptor, the Giga, Majungasaurus, Viavenator, Dinosuchus, Therizinosaurus. Jeez. Since I'm talking about for the Jurassic Park, I will not remember all these names. Throughout this video, the skull crawler, or also known as cranium reptant, yeah, strange two legged creatures mostly known for their uh, GBK pattern on their heads. The maximum size of these animals can be well over 200 feet long, but in the film Kong Skull Island, we were introduced to a smaller and more nimble version of these skull crawlers. Yep. We will be using this juvenile specimen to face a fully grown Indominus Rex. As All it right. Is brutally unfair to face an Indominus against something like this. Yeah, okay. I was about to say. Now let's get to the analysis platform. Resistance. One of the most All right, resistance. attributes of the Indominus Rex was its layer of thick hide equipped with spiny osteoderms. This layer was able to withstand different types of damage, such as shotgun fire, M134 minigun bullets, several T-Rex bites and rubber slashes, and a blast from an AT-4 rocket launcher. This dinosaur's resistance goes beyond its skin. The impact of an AT-4 launcher was strong enough to knock the Indominus down. The shock, however, was not strong enough to stun or damage any internal organs, allowing the Indominus to prolong the pursuit. In addition to that, this animal's skeletal build was extremely strong as well. An example of this is how it manages to soak an ankylosaur tail strike to the head and continue fighting. The skull crawler, on the other hand, was also durable as well. But not in the way the Indominus is resistant. Yeah, he died easily to that fire. Skull Island, this animal's skin is actually not thick at all. <laughs> so it's easily cut by an individual holding yep. a sword. I this like that fire. so vulnerable to explosions or shrapnel. But there won't be any of that in this battle. What will show up are tons of clawing and biting. Woo! But it just so happens that this creature does have an extremely resistant part of its body. Okay. Its skull. These animals can absorb impact from rocks, trees, and even horned skulls. The most important thing to note about the skull crawler's resistance is that although its body can still get injured, the only real way to kill a skull crawler is by disembowelment. No matter where. Oh uh, yeah, it ripping out its insides. This thing will continue on fighting. The best example of this is how this skull crawler had its throat slit. Ugh, and yeah. Uh -huh. So who takes the edge? On the one end, we have a dinosaur who will be difficult to pierce and with an extremely strong skeletal frame. On the other hand, we see a monster that will take damage, but with only one true corporal weakness, which puts their levels of resistance at equilibrium for this battle. Okay. 
Intelligence. All right. Intelligence. Mm. Probably the Anonymous Rex. The DNA makes itself present in this attribute as we see the Indominus Rex outwit and even strategize assaults against humans. Yeah. This animal could also retain long-term memories in detail, use camouflage to its advantage, and try to outwit humans into instigating her own escape from her enclosure. <laughs> this animal knows what it's doing. Oh, yeah. And it likes to kill for fun. Yeah! That was my favorite part about this movie. <laughs> Sport tend to be highly intelligent beings. Just watching people just dying from dinosaurs. For example, in addition to that, this dinosaur is an extremely quick learner. In Jurassic World, this dinosaur came up with a strategy to defeat an ankylosaur by flipping it while being the very oh, yeah, in I remember that. This animal. Skull crawlers are also intelligent and social creatures that live in caverns and attack larger animals using swarm tactics. This is how they laid waste to ah, the yeah. Kong species. That's how they got rid of yeah, Kong species. The events of Kong Skull Island. More mature skull crawlers will develop a keen sense of danger <laughs> and suspicion, determining whether something is a threat. Take, for example, the instance of when... Earth yes, thank you. I'm glad he brought this part up. ...by blowing up the skull crawler. <laughs> After this skull crawler determined that this particular human was not safe to eat... <laughs> that was the funniest death in the whole film. And experienced skull crawlers. Since these animals are basically killing and eating all the time, their aggressive instincts might sometimes take over in place of basic reasoning. Therefore, this malfunction ends up giving the edge to the Indominus Rex when it mm. comes to battle intelligence. Alright, yeah, see, I kind of figured, you know. Strength. Strength. See. Let's go back to this dinosaur's gene composition. We see that the most powerful contributor when it comes to physical strength is most likely the Tyrannosaurus Rex. This is Man, you got a big ass jaw. We saw both the Indominus and the Rex ragdoll each other against buildings. Unlike the T-Rex, however, the Indominus's overall strength is distributed differently. For the Indominus, most of the strength exertion happens in the mandibles, neck, forearms, and legs. Okay. These were strong enough to grab a Rex and slam it on its side. But will this strength distribution be useful against a skull crawler? Its opponent's anatomical build makes it very difficult to knock down or simply push around thanks to its weight, wide stance, <laughs> and third limb, the tail. Its higher muscle density suggests this animal is perhaps... It really does have an interesting body, in you know? Key areas. More specifically, its extremely strong and prehensile tail. A limb so strong that it could literally pick up an opponent and fling it at a great distance. Yeah, and he threw a Kong. I was like, oh, shit. I, I, I did not expect that, honestly. These animals are strong, but the skull crawler has strength allocation where it matters and where it can be used most effectively. Knowing this, the edge goes to the skull crawler for all right. strength. Agility. Ooh, agility. The Indominus Rex was certainly more agile than any I'm gonna say the Indominus the Rex. Skullcrawlers keep dying this too fast. had raptor and Giganotosaurus DNA in its genetic composition. Both of these dinosaurs' mobility traits seem to have migrated to its current attributes, which are mostly reflected by its longer set of limbs and lighter build. So yes, for a big dinosaur, the Indominus was pretty agile. But compared to the skull crawler, <laughs> that little cash and hi you missed. Story. It does not take an anatomical expert to realize that this monster could move in ways that no other dinosaur could. Apart from being a third limb, this tail allowed the skull crawler to literally steer itself to make extremely sharp turns and use these for attack. The most perfect example of this can be taken from this scene. Observe how the skull crawler yeah. makes an instant 180 degree turn in less than a second while slamming its tail on the ground. This animal's serpentine build allows it to move. That's away like a walking nightmare, game. honestly. By comparing these two animals' movements side by side, we see that the Indominus moves around in a more lumbering fashion compared to. Okay, the yeah, I see now. See okay, yeah. Evidence, All right. The edge for battle agility goes to the All right. I was tripping, then saying it's gonna die too fast. My fault. Speed. Overall speed. Speed. Okay. In enclosure, the Indominus's speed is clocked at 30 miles per hour. Keep in mind that this metric is when the Indominus measures a mere 40 feet long. Our fully grown Jeez, it's like I'm doing the speed limit with this thing. What the hell? More, meaning that this larger animal is most likely slower, reaching speeds of up to 25 miles per hour. Yeah, that's the speed limit right there. Shit. Ram and knock other dinosaurs off their feet, which could possibly aid the Indominus in hitting the skull crawler on a vulnerable area. 
A skull crawler of this size could move its legs as fast as the Indominus Rex, but the difference is the way they make strides. This monster's leg range of motion allows it to cover more ground in uh, yeah. less time using the same amount of strides. Juveniles are even faster. Remember that these younglings exist to eat, so fast locomotion to chase down prey is imperative. In short bursts of speed, however, this animal's leg anatomy allows it to literally catapult itself forward, almost airborne, covering even more distance in a split second. This ability to thrust itself forward at very high speeds gives the skull crawler the edge once again all right. overall speed. Okay. Alright, alright, alright. I'm liking this so far. We need to cover the terrain adaptability of these two monsters. Oh yeah, alright. Adaptability. Let's Being see. Compatible with the battle terrain is important when fighting a skull crawler. This particular dinosaur has been seen fighting it out with other dinosaurs in close quarters, mm -hmm. such as dense jungles and other areas filled with obstacles, and did okay. But what really sets this animal apart is its ability to camouflage. Yeah, like, oh man, when that scene popped up, woo! I was shut. Or other darker ambience. The skull crawler is also well adapted to fight in many terrains, including water. Yes, you heard that right. In the novelization of Kong Skull Island, skull crawlers have hidden gills, which could technically allow these to swim or walk underwater huh. and invade the land. I don't think I ever inland. remember this battle, however, hearing about that. That's interesting. Detect the opponent first. Given that the Indominus Rex also has thermal vision, Oh wait, but duh, I mean one of them just came out from the water, the skull duh. Crawler will always be on the Indominus Rex's scope of vision. The skull crawler doesn't necessarily have thermal vision, but does have heat seeking sensors in its empty eye sockets. Uh, you know it's funny, I always thought those were the eyes, and that's actually the nose. Could give the Indominus a few more oh, of fuck all that. This ability to seamlessly blend with its surroundings gives the oh, no. the edge for terrain adaptability. Okay, alright. Oh, this gotta be a good one right here. Real damage. The Indominus Rex and the Skull Crawler have very, very different types of skull anatomy. You will notice that the Indominus's teeth are exposed like that of a crocodile. Courtesy of yeah, the yeah. DNA. Or near so legendary Godzilla's too. Four teeth that varied in size, but were extremely strong and durable. These teeth were mounted on mandibles that could open more than 90 degrees thanks to Viper Woo! DNA. Ah, uh, oh hell no. Anatomy. What the hell? Its lower jaw or underbite allowed it to capture more surface area with each bite. How strong of a bite? Well, just take a look at how the Indominus Rex crushed a bulletproof gyro. Yeah, that part had me this fucked up. I said, oh, hell no. Wide open jaws indicate that its bite had the purpose of gripping and piercing and then proceeding to rip out a huge chunk Eesh. of flesh. Gosh. A skull crawler's cranium and bottom mandible is similar to that of a mosasaur, but their teeth uh. are very different. Skull crawler teeth are very straight and pointy. Okay. Pointing backwards, that is. This means oh, that's that terrible. <laughs> the victim manages to escape the grip. It will leave behind skin and layers of flesh. The thicker Ooh. and most deadly set of teeth are found in the middle back portion of the skull. In order to oh, all right. pierce the Indominus, the skull crawler must first land a good wholesome bite. But what about bite force? If we look at a cross section between both skulls, we find that the surface. Kong got really lucky in that scene, honestly. I'm not gonna lie. Wider, almost evenly distributing pressure. In contrast, the Indorex's pointy teeth are the only surface in which the tremendous amount of force Ooh, is pushed into the victim, gosh. giving it more. That's like a spider power. bite kind of in a way. The Indominus is harder to pierce than a spider fangs. The Indominus takes the edge when it comes to bite effectiveness. All right. Auxiliary weaponry. Ooh. One of the most useful tools that the Indominus Rex possesses are those front limbs capable of delivering deep wounds. These four claws, including an opposable thumb, allow the Indominus to perform better offensive maneuvers than a traditional theropod would. All right. The composition of these claws are so strong that they could instantly pierce bulletproof glass and dig uh, it yeah. with seemingly little effort. This weapon was the main I wish I can do that. The Indominus to bring down an entire herd of Apatosaurus and other large sauropods, something that even large theropods won't do by themselves. The skull crawler snaps back with a very long prehensile tail. Mm -hmm. As mentioned previously, this tail could also be used as a weapon, but also be used to keep it up. Oh, yeah, any bitch slap con. I was so <laughs> I was so dead. Prehensile tongue. Although not as long as its tail, this tongue can be used to grab smaller limbs and pull them into its mouth, close to those bigger teeth. 
so which of these will inflict more damage? This is where durability comes into play once again. Remember that the Indominus Rex's corporal build can withstand being tossed around repeatedly and recover quite fast. Okay. Whereas the Skullcrawler has little to no defense against deep cuts from the Indominus. Although Ugh, the Skullcrawlers man. can technically withstand... Felt painful looking at that. The Indominus's claws end up causing more physical damage, giving the edge to the Indominus Rex. All right. We are almost ready to reveal who will be the winner of this... I'm calling it Indominus Rex. Has to be. Attributes of these two monsters. X Factor. All right. Being an animal that grew up alone and neglected by its captors Ooh. only led it to become even more fearsome. And Hell the yeah. True monster. Yeah. One of the most feared and outstanding abilities of the Indominus Rex is its keen ability to detect corporal weakness in other dinosaurs, especially for an animal that lived alone most of its life. When facing an I think it is the coolest side, thing about the Indominus Rex. Not to reveal its underbelly, but to disable it from moving and deploying its tail again. This allowed the Indominus to crack the neck of the Ankylosaurus. The list goes on, attacking sauropods on the legs to bring them down fast, and flooring the T-Rex repeatedly are just some examples of how the Indominus learns fast, detects weaknesses, and uses its limbs to exploit them. We are now about to cover the most terrifying attribute found in skull crawlers. Okay. Cryptid profiles Let's reveal see. that this animal is a hypervore, meaning that it has a hyperadrenalized metabolism, which Yeah, okay, I remember that. Yep. I remember, yeah. Constant starvation. That couldn't be me, bro. Hardwired to stop at absolutely nothing when it comes to chasing down and killing its next potential meal. Yeah. In the novelization of Godzilla vs. Kong, Ren Serizawa, the man behind testing Mecha Godzilla against other test subjects, favored skull crawlers for this particular reason. Mm -hmm. Even if a skull crawler is subjugated, and <laughs> yeah, that's subjugated, the part I'm talking about. Poor skull crawler. In front of them, this terrifying drive to eat and survive only means that no matter what type of damage this skull crawler takes, this guy will fight to the absolute end. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Is Definitely true. Kind. No fucks given. All right. Ready to reveal who will win in a fight between All right, the let's monsters. see. The Indominus Rex, with its wide selection of gene contributors, wins the edge on intelligence, terrain okay. compatibility, fight effectiveness, and auxiliary weaponry. Okay. The Skullcrawler, with its insatiable appetite to kill, wins the edge on overall strength, agility, and speed. All right. Both of these monsters, however, are found to be equal in corporal resistance. All right. Give it to me. Do it to me. Compiling all of our data, we determined that the Indominus Rex was... I was right! I don't even know anything about it! Oh my god. <laughs> In a fight between the Indominus and a juvenile skull crawler, the real advantage that will save the Indominus is resistance. Although they both won the edge in this category, the Indominus's weapons were more effective against the skull crawlers in terms of I just had that feeling, you know. I don't hate the skull crawler, it's just I just had that feeling. The crawler possesses that would deal some serious physical damage to the Indominus would be its foot claws or its inner teeth. The Indominus isn't simply going to sit there and wait for the skull crawler to <laughs> Nah, don't sit there and wait. To the foot claws, the skull crawler has only two legs, which means that an attempt to claw at the Indominus would put itself in a position to be knocked off balance, making okay. this attack obsolete. But what really made the skull crawler lose was the Indominus's ability to detect weaknesses and disable strengths. The Indominus is equipped with all the tools necessary to snap off a prehensile tongue. Woo! God, that'd be terrible. Oh! Leg muscles. Oh, God. We access the hard to reach belly and disembowel this monster. Oh! Yeah. Horrible way to die. Even if the skull crawler was capable of wrapping its tail around the Indominus and throwing her around, these impacts would not be damaging enough to inflict a fatal injury to the Indominus Rex. Even though the skull crawler fought to the end, its instinctual behavior once again took over and made it execute reckless maneuvers that a more disciplined Indominus could exploit. This was a close one. If this skull crawler was larger, then it would most likely win this encounter. Hmm, Do you all think right, the okay. Indominus Rex would survive living on Skull Island? Do you think putting hmm, a single skull crawler in Island I don't know, that is a good question. Catastrophic? Let us know in the comments. For more fun I don't think I don't think the skull crawler is gonna survive sure but that subscribe button thank you so much for watching yeah we thank you, you in the next face off all right
Yeah, so kind of like what I just said yesterday, I can watch all these films and not know the names of all the dinosaurs. When you guys mentioned this Indominus Rex, I was like, what the heck is that? And I was like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, the main villain from Jurassic World. No hate to the skull crawler, but it's just funny because I was rooting for the dinosaur that I don't have any background knowledge on. But I do feel like for the most part that it could survive on Skull Island until either Kong shows up or a bigger kaiju shows up, who knows. But when it comes to the skull crawler trying to survive on Isla Nublar, I don't think so. And I only say that because yes, the skull crawler does have good defense and is not scared to back down out of the fight, but if it comes to like a T-Rex or I don't know, something that's just way bigger than the skull crawler, I think it's a wrap. But for the most part, this was really a nice comparison right here. Definitely make sure you guys go over there and subscribe to Goji Center's channel right now. Other than that, guys, thank you guys for watching this video. And if you guys are new to this channel, please press like button, comment, subscribe, turn on that bell, and I will see you guys the next time. Peace.